Good evening. Thank you for joining us for tonight's Inspiration webinar. Inspiration Software is the embroidery software line of G7 Solutions and Designs and Machine Embroidery. Our Inspiration Software line includes My Block Piecer, My Quilt Embellisher, Perfect Embroidery Pro, Perfect Stitch Viewer, the new Word Art and Stitches, and the new My Quilt Planner. Tonight's webinar features our Shape Things Your Way. And this is a Word Art and Stitches program. We have a wonderful team tonight assisting us. It is Nancy R, Chris L, Dory D, and I would like to present you to our wild word wonder, Catherine Arkinis. Thank you for joining us and enjoy the webinar. Thank you, Dory. This evening we will be working with your own shapes within WordArt. I've made an executive decision to move the text on path mentioned in the webinar blurb to the next webinar on December 1st. We will cover it then, along with puffy foam, calligraphy, applique fonts, etc. If any of you tuned in specifically for text on path, <coughs> you'll see it December 1st, I promise. Beauty comes in all shapes and sizes. Man, we are a spoiled group. The programmers and designers of Word Art and Stitches have given us 625 built-in shapes, and we still ask, can I bring in my own shape? Well, those same programmers and designers, knowing that we want more, 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 have given us the ability to do just that. Let's have a quick review on how to use the built-in shapes. Here we are in Word Art and Stitches. We'll go up to our bubble text icon, click on that. In the dialog box, we start with either the drop down arrow to see those shapes in words, or we can go take a look and see them in the actual shape by clicking on the ellipse. We have the different categories for all of those shapes. Remember, we can use the plus sign, clicking on the heading, as well as the individual categories. Let's go down to Holiday and to Thanksgiving. Double-click that piece of pie. We're brought in uh, back to our bubble text screen. We can set the border to either steal or run. We can type in whatever words we want, um, whatever secret ingredients you put in your pumpkin pie. Um, and let's not forget the cinnamon. We'll set the orientation to any, that is horizontal, vertical, and diagonal. We'll do the font combo with exotic. And here, if you watched last month's webinar, uh, we talked about how to create our own groups for the fonts, colors, and decor. So I have one set for Cake Fall. And we also created our own decor combo, so I'll use Cake Turkey. Click on Apply and we wait for that to render on our screen. It takes just a moment, depending on your computer and what you have running and what kind of RAM and so forth that you have. So our design is here on the screen. We could apply and re-spin as often as we wish to get another render, but I'll go ahead and OK it. Turn on my 3D, back that out just a little bit to 75%, and we see our design on screen. If you remember, it comes in grouped, so we can come up here to the toolbar and use ungroup. Then each of the items are separate within the design, and we can make changes to that design as we see fit. We could size any of the decor. We could um, remove one of the words if we wanted to. We could move things around and change colors and all kinds of uh, interesting things to make this design ours. All right. When we play with shapes, we're actually playing with artwork. So we need to do a little review of that artwork. A few things to keep in mind. We need to make sure that the artwork we are using is of good quality for editing and that we have permission to use the artwork. By permission, I mean you should make sure that the artwork you search for online is in the public domain and is copyright free. 
we all know that we can Google clip art pumpkins and we get a myriad of choices, the majority of which are copyrighted. Here are very basic explanations of some terms you should be familiar with. There are other things to know when using images that you didn't create from scratch, so do educate yourself in that area. What I would encourage you to do is to search for sites that offer clip art that is in the public domain. Here are two that I tend to use and seem reputable. Once you know you have permission to use artwork, you need to understand what kind of artwork to use. There are two main types of artwork. We have raster and vector. Raster images are made up of a grid of dots called pixels, and they give rough edges to the design. Since these are not used in WordArt, we won't delve into them further other than to make you aware of the raster formats. So that means JPEGs, PNGs, bitmaps are not to be used in WordArt. What we can use are vector images. Vector images are made up of shapes from points, lines, and curves based on mathematical equations, which allows us to scale the image up or down in size without losing any of the quality. WordArt can import vector images, and these are the formats, or some of them, that you should be familiar with. WMF is our Windows Metafile, the SVGs are scalable vector graphics, AIs from Adobe Illustrator, and if you have an AutoCAD program, you can use your DXF formats. The SVG would be very um, important to those of you that have digital cutters, because that's um, a vector graphic that you can use with those as well. To access vector images that come with your software, this is the path that we are going to use. We're going to find them under C colon, which is your hard drive, under the Dime folder, in the Images folder, and finally we move to the Bitmaps folder under Dime. We're going to go ahead and do that in WordArt. We'll pull up a clean screen here, and the process that we will do pretty much all evening is File, Import Artwork. When we do that, remember the path we just saw. We're going to start with our C colon hard drive, come down here to our Dime folder, double click on that. We see the Images folder, double click on that, and here is your Bitmaps folder we double click to get in that. If by chance you do not have that bitmap folder in the images folder, be sure to contact the help desk. They'll get you settled very quickly. We are brought into a list of many, many vector art. They, these come with your Inspiration by Dime software. Let's take a look at the first one. We'll click on airplane. And over here at the right, you have your preview window. As you look at these images, remember we are only interested in using the shape of the design. We're not interested in all of the detail that would make it pretty for an embroidery design. So as we analyze this airplane, it wouldn't really make a very good shape for word art because it's too narrow. We'll take a look at the second airplane. And in this instance, the outside shape of this design is not the shape we want. It doesn't follow the airplane. So that's not really a good choice either. If we move to the third in line, our Amish gentleman, if we take away what's inside, remember we don't want any detail, just the shape, we remove this pink circle, I'm not sure that that image would be easily recognizable. Taking a look at the fourth image down is our anchor, and this would be a good design to use for your word art. Once we took away all of the inside detail, we are still left with a recognizable shape. And you could continue to go through the word art, or um, the vector art that we're given to see the things that you think might be applicable to the project that you'd want to do. What we're going to play with first, though, is the little baby girl, number 11, and as I look at her, she's going to do just fine for a shape. So we'll go ahead and do an open. We bring her into the Word Art Design page screen. She is selected. Now remember, we only want the shape, so we're going to take apart this design, 
leaving ourselves with only the outline shape. Come on over to the sequence view and we'll simply start with the very first color in line. It does select the entire outside. If you're not sure what that image looks like, let's click on what is selected and drag it over to the side. And here we see that that happens to be the shape of the little baby girl that we're going to be using. With all of this internal detail, we don't need that for our shape for word art, so we will select all of that, hit delete on the keyboard, and we're left with our shape. However, we need to take a look at sequence view. Do you notice that there are two pieces of artwork here under black? If we're not sure what they represent, just do that same thing again. Click on the selected item and drag it over so that we can see our two uh, parts to this vector image. And we see we have a filled shape and we have an outline shape. WordArt does not care which of these two that we use. Your choice. But since the, sh the filled in one is already selected, I'll go ahead and delete that. That leaves us with our outline shape. First thing I normally do is a right click in the ruler and do a center origin so I know that she's centered when I bring her to page. With the shape selected, we're going to go into our bubble text. We come, out, uh, come into our dialog box and there she is. A perfect shape that we can use where we go and add our border, any words that we'd like to add. We know what they're made of. And not only sugar and spice, but generally there's some curls and bows and giggles. We'll do, um, we'll leave it at orthogonal, but we'll come in here and choose the kids font. We'll go ahead and leave it at Kate Sprites. If you remember from last month's webinar, we have um, where we added our own color groups. You may remember that to get this one to start at the beginning of the uh, alphabet, I started it with a zero and a space. Numbers come before letters, so therefore it will be at the top of my list. We're going to add some lovin' to our little girl. Apply. Wait for that to render. And in just a moment, she'll be very cute. We talked about whether to use the filled shape or the outline shape. Word art does not care uh, which one we use, but it can only read one shape. So it's important for us to have chosen one of those. We'll go ahead and bring her to screen, turn on the 3D, and you can see there she is with all of our words and some decor in there as well. If we wanted to make any changes, we certainly could ungroup her and move forward to do that. Let's try that process again so you're comfortable with it. We'll bring up a clean screen. We went under File, Import Artwork, and I'll scroll over to where the dolls, dollies start, and we'll just start at the list, second column here of the dolls, and you can see over in your preview window, I'm just going to go down the list, and there's a mouse and a tiger and another doll, and here we see a pig, and at first glance, this might look like a good shape for us to use. We know we don't want any of the internal details, but the shape of the pig looks pretty good at this point. Let's go ahead and open that. Remember, we need to get rid of the detail. I'm going to do the same thing I did with the baby girl. Click on the first color. Click and drag that first color over to the side, and I'm left with my filled shape. Once I bring that black shape away from the pig. Now I can analyze it, and in looking at this closer, I don't know if I would use this because it's not symmetrical. The head and ears are fine, but take a look at the arms. Once we move the shape away from the details, it no longer becomes um, a, a, a symmetrical shape to use, maybe one that I wouldn't want to. I'll put some words in. And the reason for that, if you look at the detail, the pig's body is angled in such a way that the arm is uh, the left arm different than the right arm. And that makes it interesting when it is an embroidery design, but when we bring it to only a shape, 
it might not be as easily recognizable as we thought it would. So let's try that again. Clean screen, file, import artwork. In this case, we'll go down to the H's and we're going to look for a horse. And as we look at this horse, we see the shape of this one is very nice, just as it is. If we were to look at the other horses, those are too detailed and might not give us a good shape once we take things away. But with this one, we'll go ahead and open it. Notice that we're at 200%. I'm going to drop us down to the 100%. And you see that this vector image is very small. Not a problem. We can size this image as large as we want. Remember, vector images can be sized up or down with no damage done to the uh, original design itself or the shape itself. We're not giving any kind of distortion to the design. We do have to take a look at this and see what pieces and parts we don't need. Uh, we'll take a look at the square. That's obvious that we don't th want that for our word art. And then take a look. This last little piece of artwork seems to be just in the middle and not um, truly important to the shape of our horse. This one is filled. I did tell you that WordArt likes either one of them. The important thing is it's only one piece of artwork. So now let's take that into bubble text, set this up as we'd like with our run stitch, whatever words that we think, um, <laughs> spelled properly of course, that we think are important or come to mind when we see this animal, don't know if you are like me, but as a little girl, I wanted a pony in the worst way. We'll go ahead and um, put exotic in there. Now, I did do any. I'm making that choice on purpose. Remember, this will give me vertical, horizontal, and diagonal. The other thing that I'm going to take a look, this horse has some narrow areas in here with the legs and the tail, so I'm going to drop the maximum size back down to 100. You may remember from the last webinar that the minimum and maximum size are based on whatever the height is set here. The 20 millimeter is the default. That's about 3 quarters of an inch, so I'm leaving that maximum size at that 0.75 uh, for inches. And the minimum size, I'll leave at 30 because that's a little less than a quarter inch. The other thing I will do, though, is to deal with the space percentage. I'm going to drop that down to a 3 so that the words will fit in a little closer to each other. Let's go get a color that will work well with our horse. We'll do clarity. I'm choosing no decor, so I'll go ahead and do an apply. And I made some of those choices. Having played with this horse a few times, I knew what I wanted to do here with the legs. I certainly could uh, drop that minimum size down even a little bit more, but quarter inch is pretty small when we're talking about our um, fonts. So in this case, I think I'll go with what I have here, bring that horse to screen, turn on my 3D, and remember, we can ungroup it by doing a right-click ungroup, you also have that button on a toolbar. And I could then, if I wanted to fill in some legs, I could select individual words in there and do a copy-paste from my toolbar, maybe rotate that second one, and then I could drag that to other places on my horse to fill in other areas if I'd like to do that. So here we have brought another vector uh, art from our built-in designs through file import artwork. All right, we'll take a little breather here. Dory, do we have any questions at this point? Yes. Hi. Yes, we Hi. do. Uh, our friend Phyllis wants to know, can you repeat the file order that we were, are able to use to download the word art, you know, to use to to, to um, find our vector images? Yes, thank you. You bet, sure. We have it right here on the screen. You're going to start with your hard drive, C colon. You'll find your dime folder. 
double click on Dime. You'll then find your images folder within your Dime. Double click on that. And then bitmaps will be inside your images folder and you'll double click on that. Very good. Okay, and second one. Yes. He says thank you very much. You're and welcome. our friend Gay has a question. Can you modify the artwork in WordArt before you start editing? And I'm assuming it's other than what you have done. Uh, does she mean, uh, Phyllis, or I'm sorry, Gay, do you mean to change the uh, points and so forth? If you're a Perfect Embroidery Pro owner, you are used to doing um, manipulation with our points on our artwork, and that is not available to us here in WordArt. Okay, and she said yes, and then she said thank you. So okay. thank you for taking care of those two. You bet. All right, we'll move forward. Um, I do want to suggest to everyone, before you go looking for a particular shape, make sure you know which ones are already given to you. For example, if we thought we wanted a Christmas tree and we went back under File, Import Artwork, and we went looking for our Christmases and um, Let's see, Christmas number 17 is our tree, and we take a look at that and bring that to screen with the thought that we might be able to use this as our shape. We know that we have to take away a lot of this other artwork that's part of the center of this tree. All I'm doing is hitting my delete key from the keyboard, and I'm left with this outline. If I want to take away the star, I see a situation where I've got little lumps still left behind and an open space here. And if I were to take this in, this really is not the greatest example that we would have for a shape for word art. So instead, I'll go ahead and select all of that and delete. Uh, let's go back to my suggestion that we become familiar with what we already have. If we go into holiday and we go into Christmas, we can actually see that there are one two, three, four, five Christmas trees that are available for us to use as we wish. So we simply could use one of those built-ins, and it's perfect for what we need to do in WordArt. As we talk about getting comfortable with what else is in our built-in shapes, let me bring you down to um, our objects and into handbags. And I want to point out that you will see this type of thing in a number of categories in WordArt, where some of the designs have a square or rectangle around them, and some of them do not. Obviously, in this handbag grouping, we have the shape with a square and the shape without. Let's do a quick look at uh, what we have here with those two shapes. We'll use the handbag by itself. We'll go ahead and do a steel stitch. We'll type in what is important in our purses, and gosh, this could just be um, a long list of things if we were going to really be honest here. But I'll go ahead and type in a few, and I'll use my exotic. I'll stay with the Kate Sprites, and I'll go ahead and do a render for that to apply. Now, this one is the one you're most familiar with, where we have a shape and we put our words in and they are going to go inside that shape in the manner of um, all of our other choices here. So this one looks fun. We'll go ahead and OK that and bring that to screen. I know that it's grouped, so I'll move it over to the side a little bit, turn on our 3D, and let's go right back into bubble text, back into our shapes, objects, handbags, and we'll now use the one that has the square around it. We're going to do the exact same thing that we did for the other, so I'll use the same words and type in so that we are making um, exact comparisons. We use the Kate Sprites. We'll go ahead and do the apply. And what we have here is really a shape within a shape. 
your purse is inside the square. So this inner shape is really going to act like a donut hole. In other words, it's going to remain empty. And the words, as you see here, are going to be placed inside the outer shape, which is our square, however, not inside the inner shape. So we have that look. We'll go ahead and bring that to screen, and I'll drag that over to the side, zoom that just a little bit so you can see both of them. And here's the comparison when we are talking about a shape, that, a shape within a shape. We could even go as far as adding additional text, typing in whatever phrase made sense to you about purses. We can add that to our design. It'll come into the center. I'm going to select it so that I can move it into position. And I probably will change the color to something other than black. But the idea is that little donut hole area, that shape within the shape, is still available for you to add more of your personalization to the gift. All right, we're going to um, actually do something from one of our ladies that brought up a point that was discussed on the forum. It is this same concept where we come in, let's do another with a clean screen, and this is from Norma. And her question was, using a design built in here, we'll go find it, it's under Kitchen, Icons, and her question was, when we have uh, a design like this that has, um, and actually that wasn't the exact one, hers was a coffee cup, let's see, coffee cup with, here it is, Kitchen 38, let's bring that to screen. Her question was, she likes this design, but when we do the rendering of the words, they are going to come in, as we've just seen in the handbag, the words are going to come in here, and she actually wants the words inside the coffee cup. So here is the technique that we would use. First of all, we need to leave this as artwork and take out any words. So we delete any of those words resting there. I do need to apply and then I can do an OK, and the entire artwork is brought to screen. If you come over here to Sequence View and click on your plus sign, you'll see that it is one piece of artwork. That's why it worked in the shapes. But what we have to do to answer Norma's question is to right-click on it and choose Break Apart so that each of these pieces are individual, and you now see all of these pieces over here in the Sequence View. At this point, we would do a selection of the outside square. And I'm not sure if, if um, Norma wanted that square, but I'm going to go ahead and delete it. Now we have the rest of the coffee cup. I do want to select everything and right click and combine it. In other words, put it back together so that it is one piece of artwork. We take a look here in the sequence view. That is our artwork. We will select it, come back into bubble text. We have our design. Now let's add some words, and um, we'll just call it our morning wake up. This is small. I'm going to do that same thing I just did by bringing my maximum size back to 100 and using my space percentage to 3. I'll go ahead and apply it, and we'll wait till that renders. And you should see the words go into all of the shapes. Um, even in our steam, so you could decide if you wanted that there. We'll go ahead and OK it and bring it to screen. Look at our 3D. And again, all we have to do is ungroup this design, and we could move some of these pieces and parts if you want them in the steam. If you don't want them in the steam at all, you could simply delete those that fall into the steam. You can bring one of those down to the saucer. You could bring one of those to the handle. You could bring wake over there, whatever you wanted to do to your coffee. But that's how you would use this design that's built into WordArt, but to take away the square and put your words inside the coffee cup. We're going to stay on this idea for just a moment, um, because having played with that square 
that shape within a shape, what happens if the shape that you want doesn't come with a rectangle? In other words, we're really going to do the reverse of what Norma asked us. She had the rectangle and didn't want it, and we want to put one with something that doesn't have it. If we go into hats, we see this crown. It does not have the shape within the shape. We're going to do the same technique that we did with Norma's. We're going to leave it artwork, going to take out any text, and I'm going to apply, then OK it. I'm brought to screen. Let's back this out a little bit so you can see it. Over here in Sequence View, we see that this is artwork. And now to add our rectangle, we can come up to the artwork tool. We're going to use the side drop-down arrow and choose rectangle. I will draw a rectangle around that crown. Now I have two pieces of artwork. And what I would do first, I'm going to select both of them, right-click, come down to a line, and I want to make sure that my crown is centered within my rectangle, so I will ask for a center align. And that is now just the way I want it. And the last thing I would do would be to come up to the ruler, right-click, and center origin. So everything is centered as I wish. Both pieces of artwork are selected. So the final thing we need to do is right-click. Once again, we need to combine so that this is only one piece of artwork for bubble text to work with. We'll click on bubble text. We see our shape within a shape. I'll go ahead and play with this one and add this for my little princess. Whatever words come to mind when you're playing with a crown, I am, um, I'll just leave it orthogonal. I will choose the kids, and my little princess really likes purple, so I'll go get that purple haze, do my apply, and as we saw previously, it will, the crown will act as our donut hole and the words will fill in around that rectangle shape. Takes just a moment to render. This opens up a lot of design opportunities for you. That looks good. I'll go ahead and bring that to screen, turn on 3D, and once again, if I wish, I could continue to add more words to this design to make it personalized. Uh, select that, and I'll add just one more color here, a little darker purple, change her name, center that as I'd like. And you have, once again, created a, a one-of-a-kind design by putting your own shape into one of the artwork shapes that we can draw. I like this so very much. Um, there's so much opportunity here that I'd like to show you one more. We'll go into Holiday, Christmas, the Dove. We'll bring that to screen. Remember the trick is to leave it artwork, take out any words. I need to apply it, and then I can OK. I'll back out a little bit to our 75%. and go back into my art tools. This time let's choose a circle and I'll draw my oval around my bird and this time maybe not center the two within each other. I'll leave it off center. I will select because I'm going to leave it off center. I don't have to align them but I do need to choose both of them. Right click and combine. Remember that is the trick to get both of them to be one piece of artwork. We come back into bubble text. We're going to set this up for steel. Type in the words that make sense for this type of shape. Add whatever else we would like to add to this. I'll go get some Christmas colors for our dove and apply it wait for that to render. And I just very much like the look of this type of thing. Again, a shape within a shape, 
and you have made this particular artwork. We'll go ahead and come to screen, take a look at that, maybe size that up a bit so you all can see that. <coughs> all right, Dory, do we have any questions at this point? Ooh, yeah. <coughs> Phyllis wants to know, Phyllis is a very, very inquisitive person. Okay, Phyllis? Okay. <laughs> How do we design our color schemes? She really likes that. All right, let's go back and we'll, we'll answer that one. Um, here we have color theme, and mine is first in line, as we said, but we have a plus sign right here. If we click on that plus sign, you are brought into an empty box where we would name this design, and maybe we would call it Phyllis, and then we'd come down here to our green plus, and we would add the colors that we enjoy. And um, I'm not sure, but I'm going to go with purple for Phyllis. We'll add just a couple of colors of purple in there for her, and maybe she would like some pink as well. And the idea here is you would continue to add the colors that you'd like in your grouping. Now, here's a hint. The color that is first in line will be the outline color of your designs. See how this um, oval is peeking out and it's black? And you see that the black is the first color in Kate's brights. So for Phyllis, hers will be purple. We'll go ahead and OK that. And we see that Phyllis has been added to the list in alphabetical order with the colors that we chose for her. Now, here's, here's a little bit of, um, this is definitely up to you. You can see where I've created three of my own, and I start them with Kate. So I always start my own with Kate so that they fall in the same area alphabetically. Phyllis, if you wanted to add more of your own, you might want to start all of them with your first name and then what they represent. Or you could put the letter Z to start with, and they'll always be at the bottom of the list. Or if you like this trick, you can start with a, a zero, put a space there, and then the name of your um, color, and it will be at the top of the list. But once you have your color in there, it will be available for you to use over and over and over again. Okay. okay. This is also a great time to remind people about um, the micro fonts. <coughs> yes. Most of what you have, when we talk about this height being a uh, millimeter, and we said that that is about 3 quarters of an inch, and the minimum size goes down to a little less than a quarter of an inch. When you create your font combos, and you can see in here there's one called Kate Mix. When you go to create a new combo for fonts, and I do the same thing, notice that it automatically puts in one micro font. You have to have at least one micro font in every combo, font combo group that you create. Because when you are doing such small lettering, um, it has to pull in a micro font. You can add more. The difference between this green plus is a normal font, and this one with the small uh, uh, circle around it is a small font or micro font, and you could add a second one of that. We certainly would want a name for that. And if I follow my own rule, I would type in my name for that, so it would be Kate Micros. When you go to stitch these out, the general rule to follow, because these are specifically digitized to stitch this small from a 3 to a 6 millimeter, you want to use a size 9 needle and a 60 weight thread um, that you're going to get your best embroidery with that combination with your microfonts. Okay. Any others at this point, Dory? Nope, that is it. So you've shown us uh, um, how to do, in essence, the color. You reminded yes. us about the uh, micro fonts. Yes. And making a font combo is the same thing as doing the color. And thank yes. you for reminding us about the name. I appreciate that. You're very welcome. Um, since we're a little a bit at halftime here in our webinar for this evening, 
I am very excited to start a new tradition for those of you who join our webinars live. Although you already know the greatest advantage of watching a webinar live is to have your questions answered immediately by our great team, now there's a bonus for you, and it is the chance to win a set of professionally digitized designs. We'll be having the drawing at the end of the webinar, and you, de you do need to be present to win, so please stay with me, and as we end the webinar, Dory has given me permission to choose the lucky number for our giveaway this evening. Okay. All right. At this point, let me, I'll go ahead and cancel out of my screen here, and I'll bring up a clean screen. And the question comes up, where else can we get vector artwork? Well, I mentioned going to the Internet. And if I do that and I come over, I've already brought myself to one of those sites that I suggested for you. It's called publicdomainvectors.org. It is in the public domain, and they are all copyright free. So in this particular design, we have a search box. As I suggested to you all to be comfortable with the designs that you get with word art, I know that there are leaves under there, and there's a maple leaf and a ginkgo leaf and some other very pretty leaves, but there's not really an oak leaf. So if I wanted to search for oak leaf, I'm going to type that up here in my search box and hit my enter, and in just a moment, the um, site gives me the designs that I can choose from. And here I see a number of different oak leaves that would be fun for me to use. I'm going to use this red one. I'll go ahead and click on that. It brings me to the screen where it allows me to download this oak leaf. And I love the name. It's Fleur de Leaf. So we'll go ahead and you can see right down here at the bottom it has downloaded that SVG. I'll click on that brings me into the screen where I can do a right click and save as. Here you need to be aware of where you're putting this design. I'm going to put it right into my folder that I've made for this evening. It has its own name. I'll go ahead and save it. Let's go back to WordArt screen. Here we have a clean screen. Same process we've done previously. File import artwork, but this time it's not in our bitmaps folder, of course. I need to go find it, so I go back to the hard drive. It's in this first folder that I'm using for this evening, and here's my fleur de leaf. So we'll go ahead and double click that to bring it to screen. Here is your vector artwork. Let's make sure over here in sequence that it is only one piece, and it is. So we select it. We go into bubble text. Choose our ellipse. Oops, we don't need that. We choose our border, and I'm going to set it up for a run stitch. Type in whatever words that I want for my leaf. And here I'm just going to put the colors in. I'll leave it as block, and I'll go down and choose a Kate Fall combination that I've created. Apply, and we'll wait for that to render. <clears throat> didn't take very long at all. Come back to the screen with our OK, turn on our 3D, and there is the leaf that we took from a public domain site, a SVG vector file. Now, as a reminder, let's go ahead and ungroup this, and we're going to come down to the shape of the leaf because I want to refresh you over here, it does come in. We chose it to be a run stitch, and the choices that we have for that are a, a standard, which is your single stitch, a two-ply, or a bean. I very much like the bean. I like that outline standing out, and you can see that that makes a, um, a little bit more impact with the shape of our leaf. For those of you that own Perfect Embroidery Pro, I'm going to come over here to that software for just a little bit and show you how you can also bring in artwork from Perfect Embroidery Pro. Now, for, uh, to help you see what software I'm in, I do have the background of 
Perfect Embroidery Pro Pink. Um, it'll help you to know when I'm in Perfect Embroidery Pro versus uh, Word Art, but I will talk about that as we go along. We're in Perfect Embroidery Pro. You have built-in applique shapes. We'll go ahead and select that and scroll down through those many, many, many that were offered. And the one that I'd like to use is the Santa hat. So we bring it to screen. Now, we went to find that under applique shapes, so obviously it is an applique. I'll right click, convert to, come down and change that back into artwork. I am in Perfect Embroidery Pro. I'm going to come up here and do a file, come down to export artwork. Does that make sense to you? Because we're taking it from this one and we want to send it out, if it were, to another one. So we'll do export artwork. It brings us into a screen. We need to make sure where it's going. I'm in my folder for this evening. Also notice that automatically it gives us an SVG format. I'm going to call this Santa Hat. Save it. Come back into WordArt. We'll bring up a clean screen. The same process we have been doing all evening. File, import artwork. We want it to come in to this software. So we find our Santa Hat, double click it, and it is now on our screen. Let's take a look under sequence. Yes, it's only one piece of artwork. We'll go back into our bubble text. Our Santa hat is on screen. We'll go ahead and make it as we'd like it. Add whatever words we would like it to read. And I'll go ahead and put the kids font in there. I like that. We'll go get our Christmas colors again. Apply. And what we have done here, we took a shape from Perfect Embroidery Pro, turned that into artwork, and we did a file export artwork. Whereas once we are in WordArt, we are doing an import artwork so that we bring it into the software. Here we have our Santa hat, we OK that, and we have another cute shape to use for our projects. Let's do one more from there, and once again, we'll go over into PEP. This is a design. Those of you that joined me in May for the webinar on artwork in Perfect Embroidery Pro, this might look familiar to you, but this was an L that we created from TrueType font, and we just added some points and pulled the crown up. We can use this design. First of all, we're going to select just the letter L. Come up here, do a copy, bring up a new screen, paste it. If we come over to Sequence View, we see that this is a run stitch. So I want to select the entire design, right click, convert to artwork. Now we do the same thing, file, export artwork, give it a name. It is an SVG file, so we'll do a save. Let's go back to WordArt, bring up a clean screen. Once again, file, import artwork. Here is our L for Liberty. It's on the screen. Now, take a look. Over in sequence, we have two parts to this artwork. So remember, we're going to select it, right click, Combine. It is now one piece of artwork. We bring it into our bubble text. It'll come up on the screen. We do what we would like to do to it. Type in whatever would be applicable. Let's go ahead and choose blue, our ocean, for our liberty and apply it. And here we have our shape that we brought in that we created, and we are now using it in WordArt. All right, one other thing I'd like to show you. Uh, the question comes up that up to this point, all of our artwork, we have done an import. 
we've done a file import artwork to use something from the internet, something from Perfect Embroidery Pro, something from our vector art, but we always have to import it when we want to use it. How can we put a particular shape into the shapes that we access through our bubble text? And we can do that by saving our artwork as a library file. So once again, we're going to go back into Perfect Embroidery Pro, and we'll uh, call up a clean screen. And in this case, let's do a file import artwork. We're going to use that leaf that we uh, got from our public domain website. This is artwork, and the procedure for this is slightly different. We're going to do a file and a normal save as because the difference here, save as type, we're going to do a drop down and come choose library file, LDF. Let's click on that. We'll name it leaf. And notice that, yes, it gives us a library file format, but it automatically put us into a library folder. One of the things that we have to be aware of is because we are in Perfect Embroidery Pro, the library it assumes we want to put it in is the Perfect Embroidery Pro library. And in this case, we need the Word Art and Stitches library. So let's go up one level to G7 Solutions, and there you will find Word Art and Stitches. Double-click that. Now we have the library that we want. Let's double-click on Bubble Text. We double click on shapes, and here we are in the shapes that you, uh, you may even recognize these categories that we see in our shapes. And one of the things that you need to do is to create, excuse me, to create your own folder. And I'll show you how to do that. This button right up here, the yellow file folder with the red star on it, allows us to create a new folder. You would type in perhaps the letter Z to keep it at the bottom of the list and you would type in your name and enter. That's how you create a folder. You can see that I already have my folder created. It's Z Kate's Shapes. So that's actually where I'm going to put our leaf. You can see I've created a couple others. So we'll do a save. Let's go back into WordArt. We'll come up. We have a clean screen. Back into bubble text. We will use our ellipse to see all of our shapes. Here are those categories, and there are the two folders that we created. Here's mine. Yours would be listed there. I'll select mine, and here is our leaf. And that leaf is now available for me to use over and over and over again, however often I would like, because it is now part of the categories under shapes. The, uh, just as a refresher, the path that we went, we followed to get there is our C colon, program data, G7 solutions, word art and stitches. That's where we went up one level to make sure we were in word art and stitches, library, bubble text, shapes, and you would create your own folder. Be sure to read your upcoming issue of Designs and Machine Embroidery, the November and December issue. I have an article in there about taking a shape of a letter of a true type font from PEP into, uh, from Perfect Embroidery Pro into Word Art and Stitches for a very fun Christmas wall hanging. So that'll be another project that you could follow along easily. All right, we'll come back to our screen here. We'll cancel out, and um, at this point, if you don't have Perfect Embroidery Pro, remember you can create artwork in any software that allows you to save as a uh, Windows Meta file, or a scalable vector graphic, or Adobe Illustrator, or an AutoCAD. So remember, these are the formats that you'll use most often. That's not all of them, but it's the ones that you will use most often. Dory, do we have any questions at this point before we, we draw our fun name? We 
do just have one quick question, and it's yes. something about um, tech support. <laughs> Okay. Tech support is open 24-7. It is by email and email only. If anybody has installed any of their software, they have noticed on their desktop a gray and light gray icon with a question mark in it. If you click that, it will bring you on to our brand new website. Go over to support, and there you are. Looks like this. It might be a little different colors. It's a different color now. Okay. All right. And in fact, you had it over to the left. Okay. <laughs> you were quicker than I was. Oh, um, that's okay. And we're absolutely there. You go help desk. I S help desk. Right here. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And if you click that, it will take you right into Inspired by Dime. And then you are welcome to click the support button and ask us all the questions. You can also find the forum from there. Okay, take it away. And Super. I need a drum roll. Da 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 da. da. Oh, I can't. I can't. And the do number. <laughs> <laughs> Let's pick the lucky winner, number twenty-two. Okay, one moment, please. Okay, and that's and is, to have the drum roll. Glorious. Yes, Dory is finding our lucky number 22. Um, whoever you may be, you do need to contact, go to the help desk directly after the webinar tonight to give your email address for Dory to send you those designs. And the lucky winner is Shirley Covert. Yay. Good. Congratulations. Good job, Yay. <laughs> You're going to have fun. Okay. Is that about it, ma'am? That, that is it for me. Um, thank everybody for joining me. Uh, hopefully we have answered the questions for you. Can I bring in my own shapes into WordArt? You know that you can. Um, I hope to see you December 1st when we play with all things text. Text on path, puffy foam, calligraphy, applique letters, a full hour for fun. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night.